this can, this can be considered starting, I think. Okay. <laughs> um, so, on Thursday, I went to a thing at the moment. You guys go to this? There was like at MoMA, it was the newsstand on the uh, third floor. They were doing like performance art out there. Mm. Anybody see that? No. <laughs> yeah, I was trying to, well, got was it good? Was it fun? Work, so mm. I was trying to prepare, you know, to see other performance art, to see what people do. Um, I thought a really interesting thing that happened during that um, event it was curated by a woman named India. Um, and, yeah, I don't know, there was a, a period, I got there around 12.45, and around 1.15, they said that, India said that there was going to be an intermission after this next piece. So the piece happened, and then people continued throughout, like people kept going up right after the thing, and then people were talking, and it was just a complete mess. And I just didn't, I didn't understand how that mistake could have been made because she was putting on the show and then she kept calling people up after she had said there was an intermission. And that was what I felt like I had so, learned the most. So she, so she said there was an intermission right after she said, yeah. or, and then she just And then she came up and kept introducing more artists and said it was going to be an hour intermission. And the hour intermission started 30 minutes later. Huh. And I swear, I listened very closely that she promised that this was going to happen. Uh, luckily, I had no one to talk to, and I was alone. But other people who had friends there were very much ruining the art of other people mm. who had nothing to do with the whole intermission debacle. So I'm glad nothing like that has happened here. That was, <laughs> <laughs> that was by far the most alarming thing cool. at that performance art event. Anyway, that has nothing to do with this piece. It's just a little anecdote. Um, so, what we're doing now, I have a grandmother, and she is about 84 years old, and she's just entered rehab for alcoholism. Wow. So, that's pretty interesting to me. She, um, she is, she's an old lady, right? And so, the reason why she's in rehab now is because... Um, she was very, very ill, and she called 911, and they took her to the hospital, and they didn't really know what was wrong with her. She was just, she was basically, she was dying, and um, she was like, they had to like knock her out to, to, to like fill her full of fluids. She had all sorts of infections and undiagnosed diseases. Hold on, I really want to look at my dad's email to say exactly what she had. Um, because it's, it's only just come out. This was a couple of weeks ago. But now we have the, the skinny on what's going on. So she has COPD, which is called chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. And she has diabetes, general poor health, severe trunk and leg weakness. And um, so to. She was, she was going to die, and she had signed a DNR, like a do not resuscitate type of deal, um, but as she was, you know, passing out, essentially, they said, we can keep you alive, but we're going to put you on, like, a breathing tube, and she was, you know, right at the edge of consciousness, and although she had previously kind of, like, made it her wish that she didn't want to be on um, life support, she very quickly, um, and my dad was there, he said, she said, oi, 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 do whatever you can to keep me alive. <laughs> <laughs> so so they, they stuck a tube um, down her throat, um, I think it's called like a tracheotomy or something, and then like hooked her up to feeding, feeding um, IV, and she lived. But she is a really big alcoholic. She likes scotch, and she has liked scotch for a very long time, um, as far as as long as I've known her. She's a big drinker, and so she would say to me when we were when when the nights got late and she'd had her like five or six or whatever, she would say to me, David, as a child of the depression, I had to choose between ballet lessons 
and piano lessons. <laughs> as, which is, that's an old family joke. Because it was really uh, quite a thing. <laughs> she was fine. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> she is a sad lady. But um, she, she's a big drinker. And so, so to um, keep her alive, because she was, she was going through extreme withdrawal within like 15 hours of not drinking. Like her body was shutting down. So they knocked her out, put the feeding tube on, they um, pumped her full of all these sorts of things. And then when she woke up alive four days later, four days unconscious, she was totally detoxed. But you can't just send somebody with all this like health problems back to their house and be like, okay, good luck. So they sent her to rehab. So now we've got an 84-year-old woman with probably a couple months to live, spending that time in rehab. <laughs> it's an incredible, incredible, incredible thing. <laughs> um, so I took it upon myself to buy her favorite scotch. This was always sitting around the house. Um, it's called the Famous Grouse. It's a blended <laughs> scotch. It's not very good. Um, I'm inviting. Um, I'm inviting everybody up to take a shot. And, you know, you can say, David, I don't like scotch, I don't want to drink, I don't, you know, I don't want to do this, but it is an it's an unpleasant drink and death is an unpleasant thing. <laughs> so that's what I'm trying to uh, impart on to you. So, yeah, I invite you up, come, come take a shot of, uh, of, of scotch for old Audrey. Sweet one.